Alright, I'm going to throw together a little after competition damage. Uh, this video is going to be very uh, informal. And just me taking apart my robot and seeing what happened. So, uh, welcome and uh, enjoy the... Enjoy the disassembly. So this is recorded on one of the world's worst cameras, so uh, sorry about any of that quality. So uh, these are by no means the original wheels that I got put on my robot. I had to swap them out many times over the event. So I uh, don't think they survived this well, because they did not. Uh, yeah, you can see this wheel has uh, completely been ripped off at one point. I think I just put a little bit of super glue on there just for that competition. Uh, hub's got some pretty good damage all over the center. Uh, I don't think I need to redesign these at all just because uh, they stood up to as much as I wanted to throw at them, and I was actually planning on making them shorter anyway, so maybe I'll make them a little shorter so that you can't actually hit them without hitting the wheel first. <laughs> That's not how I wanted to take this apart, but that works. I did take some pretty good hits to my uh, wheels here, so I'm not surprised if this bolt here is seized right up. It pulled the whole axle out instead of just unscrewing the bolt on the end. Belts all survived. I had a bunch of spares, never actually used any of them. So, uh, this side here got completely destroyed. I actually just had to replace it with a um, polycarbonate side piece that I had as a spare. The, um, I don't remember if it was John or Titanium, but one of those big old horizontal spinners came in with my wheel here and they hit it at just the right height, right about there. Um, and then actually sheared off the output shaft of my motor. I had to replace the uh, output shaft of this guy and put a big old dent in this uh, steel side place I have. I actually gave it to them and they posted it on their uh, Instagram. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was an Instagram that they posted it on, so I'll post that picture there right now. Let's dig a little further. somewhere. I'll just put them inside these belts. So my electronics actually didn't suffer any damage uh, due to other robots. At one point I was taking my robot apart quickly because I was trying to replace... I think I was trying to replace the wheels or something and also get one of the motors back in place and while I was doing that I ripped off one of the signal wires to my motor, uh, just taking it apart and making mistakes. So, yeah, I don't think any other robots destroyed any of my wiring, so well enough protected, I think. That bolt's all messed up. This is belly pan number two. I actually don't know where I put belly pan number one. But belly pan number one just had a little chunk out of it, so I swapped it out as I could. But it's in pretty good shape. Um, the only way that I think someone could get through this is if I was like up on a wall and someone hit the belly pan directly, so I don't think I need to make that any thicker. Also, it would save a lot of weight, and I like being able to look in and see all of the electrical connections that are being made, and uh, during assembly, make sure I'm not trying to bolt through a signal wire or something. So I think I'm going to keep that the way it is. Go ahead and take off the side.
So this slide plate here sustains some of the most impressive damage from the fight. I'll put a picture up for you. But this side plate got bent all the way around and uh, actually blocked me from taking this bolt off, which was pretty impressive. That was done by John. Uh, these were not supposed to be two separate pieces. They were intended to be one piece, but I got these on my friend's order, sent cut send order, which actually came in, and uh, the one that I wanted did not come in. So I just doubled these up and hoped for the best. It didn't work so well because when they hit, they got right between them and bent this one all the way around and held that one there. So pretty much it just pried my wheel off of my motor shaft because the one stayed and the one got ripped out. I just hammered these back into place between matches. They served me pretty well. All right, let's see. Can't get the electronics out quite yet. But we can flip the robot in half. That's what I thought would happen. So uh, my weapon is very loose right now. I think it actually slotted out this polycarbonate. And so the hex that I have, the hex feature that I have to hold this in is uh, ruined. So I don't think I can actually take the shaft out very easily. Yeah, it's just rotating in there. Hmm. frame here? No, of course I'm not. Let's just scoot you down so I stop drifting out of the frame. Alright, there's frame. Let me put down a piece of tape. Alright, that's about where you guys can see. I'll try to stay in here. this piece of gaffer tape here like six times. I took it off and put it back on because to work on the robot I have to basically split it in half. So this is the balancing between the cells on the two sides. And this is for enabling. So this is connected right to that master switch and so it will enable this half of the robot as well as that half of the robot with the one switch. There's the positive that's connected to the battery, and then the E is the enable signal. I know we can just pull all these electronics out, I think. Yep. So these are my drive motors. Obviously, the output shaft got sheared off on one of these guys. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm okay with that. They had to have a stupid powerful horizontal spinner, and they had to hit exactly at that center of my wheel to get that to happen. Uh, yeah, the dent... The dent was right perfectly at the height of the axle, so I think if you get a direct hit on any axle, it's going to shear off, which is unfortunate, but, you know, what are you going to do about it? Alright, let's pull this up here. Okay, so a little bit of damage on my Mark Forge print, but like, that was one of the thin walls I didn't really expect to survive much. Everything here looks pretty good. There's a very minor scratch here. I don't think I think I did a pretty good job of not letting anyone get to the back here. So all of that stayed in good shape. Yeah, we're doing pretty good here. Uh, 
this side is not slotted out at all, so uh, all the damage causing all the wiggling must have been from that other side. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see this guy is now a slot. You can, uh, these used to be press fits, but right now you can wiggle this. No, you can't wiggle it up and down. Interesting. Look at all that damage. How is it moving so easily? Is this wiggling? Did I lose a bearing? No. I mean, there's a lot of damage here. You can see it for sure. Uh, maybe this guy actually loosened up and slid down. And that's how it was sliding? I think that must have been it. I think this bolt must have come loose. Alright, I guess I just gotta keep an eye on that better and make sure it's tightened down really well before each match. Ooh, this motor is unhappy. Is it full of some? Oh, one. Is that a mag? Did some lamination come off? There's a piece of metal in here. Come here. Oh no, that, that magnet split in half in the middle. Okay. Interesting. So I actually did battle harden these motors, but that didn't stop this magnet. Jeez, I can't get that out of there. Come on, focus. Come on. Come on. Ah, you have to take my word for it. There is a big old chip out of that magnet there, so that would be where my uh, crunchy motor was coming from. But it wasn't enough to actually cause any real damage. There's the chip. That's like a the middle portion of that magnet there. The rest of it actually seems pretty solid, so I will continue using this motor for testing. Is that the only issue? I think that's the only issue. This guy's pretty smooth now. This guy spin. Yeah, spins. Ooh, interesting. That is very off center now. Is the motor shaft bent? Ooh, this uh this counterweight is definitely coming off. Someone must have got a hit on it or something. Oh, there was a little hit there on it. Okay, someone must have gotten to my counterweight. I didn't feel that while driving, surprisingly. But uh, there is definitely an off balance here. Yeah, this kind of way to shift in that direction. This was also my, uh... oh yeah, it's loose. Let me see if I can just pull it off of here. See, it's still glued on one side. And the glue on the other side is acting like a spacer, but I think if I just wiggle this back and forth. Yeah, there it is. This counterweight is beat up. All the stickers from my motor are coming off. <laughs> Impressive. Not that damage got that deep, I'm surprised. Yeah, shaft's still straight though, so counterweight just got shifted. I'm surprised it didn't bend this uh, eighth inch shaft. Bearing still pressed in there, that mark forge part. A cam follower bearing is solid. It better be. It cost $23 on its own. All the Mark Forged parts seem in good shape. I'm not going to replace this one. I might replace this one just because it has a little notch in the bottom, but probably not actually for driving practice. Oh wait, i got to replace this one for the, uh, the nut pocket here. I actually can't take these electronics out very easily because my master switch, I glued that in right before the competition. I can break that glue and unbolt this motor and get it out, but I'm not too worried about that. Oh, this is interesting. My signal wire, or my ground wire for signal on this motor got ripped off. This is the one that got shoved in by uh, titanium. So I was actually very surprised that my signal wires didn't break and that the motor was still running after that because it got pushed past. I have this little cutout in here to allow the wires to be installed. Uh, back when the rope was shorter and this plate was further in and right on top of these wires so that might have saved me a bit but yeah it should it still sheared off the signal ground for my uh for my motor here but luckily the regular ground will also act as the signal ground um it's just a little bit of a noisier signal but clearly there's some redundancy in there so i'm very happy with that 
A little bit of soldering to get done there, though. Batteries. The batteries puffy. I did abuse these batteries a bit during the competition. Uh, I forgot to charge them at one point, and then slam charged them up to uh, voltage at like 2 or 3 amps, so they're not super happy. Ooh, I dented this back battery. That is the nut for that guy. I forgot to put in, I have a little piece of orange uh, soft material. Maybe like that. I think I'm going to actually just throw that out because I didn't know how to put it was. Yeah, here it is. This guy must have fallen out and I forgot to put it back in. Uh, this little orange soft material fits in there and prevents the battery from contacting those nuts in, or those uh, bolt heads in there. And I guess I forgot to put this in, so I dented the heck out of that little battery in there. So I'll probably be replacing this battery. That might be why that cell was unhappy. Uh, cell 2 was also very unhappy. I think I got it down to 2.5 2 volts because I forgot to charge it before competition. I'll definitely need to make myself a between competitions checklist, so that way I don't forget to do anything like that in the future. Because that's stupid. There's no reason I should forget to do that. But yeah, that's about all the damage I sustained. Uh, the wedges, I mostly gave to the teams that beat him up. This was the uh, competition between Titanium. He didn't beat it up enough for it to be impressive. So uh, he got, I think, my black wedge, and I gave my... Uh, I had another one of these smoked polycarb wedges. I gave that to... Hmm. What was it? Oh, it was Malice, right. Yeah, I gave the other wedge to Malice, because he beat, beat the crap out of that wedge in our fight as well. Uh, weapon. This weapon was mild steel, just cut at the uh, the metal shop at the local high school here, and uh, it was surprisingly balanced, very good shape. Um, I definitely took the uh, sharp edges off though during the competition, so hopefully my AR ones come in and I'll swap these right out and we'll be good to go. But uh, if you watch this whole video, it's 20 minutes long, probably no one made it to the end. But uh, thanks for watching, uh, thanks for looking at the robot, I'll try to have a more in-depth details of how the robot works with the counterweight and the weapons uh, in the future, but this is just kind of wanted to throw this out here, me taking apart the robot after the competition, yeah, I thought it would be interesting, thanks for watching.